Okay. Just do a live stream on YouTube because it records it right on there. Then I don't have to upload it. Easy to go back and watch again. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I wonder if on YouTube, if you can hear other people's voices. I had kind of a problem with that when I did that last video. The last, yeah, the last video, we couldn't hear the voices and I couldn't see only the main screen. None of the pictures that you were sharing. I don't know what happened there. I hope this one works. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm going to uh, copy this here. And if you would uh, post it on the group, I'll send it to you. And then if you would post it on the group, because uh, I'm kind of in Facebook jail right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're in jail, are you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> It was, it was a long time coming. I had to come sooner or later. So. <laughs> okay, so how am I going to do that? You're going to send it to me in Messenger? or? Yeah, I'll send it to you in Messenger, and you just copy and paste it in a, in a, a, a post, a new post on the All page. Right. Okay, just a minute here. Um, where am I at? I'll go over here. There we are. I'll find you. Huh. That way, a few other people can get here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know how to copy paste? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just and then just go to a say Facebook. like yeah. to a new post and just just put that in there and then uh it'll show up and people can either watch it there or uh go to YouTube or if they're not in the Zoom oh. meeting. I posted it and it's the uh a hoof capsule. Okay. So picture of that? Yeah. That's the right one. Uh yeah. Yep, yep, that's it. Looks good. Is that it? Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to read your first posting, what you said about the Philly. Okay. Um and uh let me get down here and find it. And then we'll look at um the pictures you took previously. Yeah. Let's see, it's down here somewhere. Let me make sure I got the right. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, trimming the young horse, you know, from the full, full on up. And I'm going to share some things that I think. And um, we're going to take a look at Marsha's Philly's feet. This is, I'm going to read this. Okay. Yep. Says high tech groups. I would really appreciate some advice with these little hooves. Two issues. Number one, this is an eight month old thoroughbred Philly. She is very tall, projected to finish at least 17 hands high, and tends to stand on the inside of her front hooves so she can reach the ground to eat. By doing this, she has worn the medial sides of her hooves off. The vet said to file her lateral heel to correct it, but instead I have been lightly lowering and beveling the lateral walls from mid-toe to just behind the quarters in the heel area, not the buttresses. <clears throat> I am not sure if this is the way to address this, but it seems to be helping. I certainly could use an experienced opinion from someone with a trained eye. Issue two, <clears throat> how do I trim to correct the flaring and bars sole view? I have no idea if a baby hoof should be trimmed the same in the same manner as an adult hoof. <clears throat> Or if these long bars are normal uh, in a baby and should be left alone. 
What I have been doing is filing off excess wall and to sole level and beveling the toe quarters. And I have trimmed the bars back towards the heel since they tend to grow to the tip of the frog. What I see from comparing October sole view to the November 27th sole view, her hooves have more distortion flaring and run forward since I have done that. I really need help, please. Thank you for any suggestions or observations you have. Okay, well, let's go up here and uh, let's just take a look here. Now this filly again is eight months old. So she's got a lot of growing to do. Yeah. And um, as soon as we find her here, we're just gonna go through the pictures. Um, she says, I was finally able to get pictures of our little filly that you asked for. I hope they are good enough. I, I think they're great. I think you did a great job. Oh, great. Because it was a little mucky. And every time I cleaned her foot and put it down, it got goop all over it again. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, it looks that looks great. And okay, great. and and Anyway, so we're good looking at the front view there. She Lisa actually asked for a chest view to see if there's anything yeah. going on from the chest to the legs or, you know, other mm -hmm. than just the hooves. Yeah, and we'll have him, we'll get his opinion on that here in a, a okay. little later, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, so there's the front view. And, you know, you see that in colts a lot. They, they're, they're, they always have to spread their legs to eat grass. You know, yeah. it's super long legs and a short neck. Oh, oh yeah, no, still neck, but shorter than her legs. Yeah, and and she looks like she's gonna be nice and muscular too. I hope so. She's yeah, she's uh, gonna turn into a nice little girl. about the muds there i can't see the muck yeah that's okay though just a little sand yeah yeah and i i see what you mean here about yeah um but that's not all bar okay the soul like the bars end about here but yeah. the soul right in here okay can grow up and look just like bar so should i trim that level or or just let it go um well, you could like smooth this out right yeah. in here so there's okay. not lumps. Yeah, you know, you don't you don't want lumps developing here because it'll affect the sole corium okay. under underneath. You know, they, they just don't wear their feet out like they don't wear um fast enough to keep up with the growth. See? She's got good little frogs. Yeah, that little pointed thing between the bulbs there. What is that? This That's right here? Yeah. Well, well, uh, this is where your, your frog stay is behind there. This is a, a piece of a uh, frog that grows between the bulbs. And, and it should be very high up in the foot like it is right here. Now, um, covering it here, that's periopal skin. You see the white? Yeah. But directly behind that, because the periopal skin goes all the way around the hoof, the, the top rim of the hoof wall and stuff. But directly behind that, right in here, is frog. This material right here. Like here's your central sulcus and it goes way down in here between the bulbs. I just never noticed that pointed kind of jutted out area yeah, in my older I, I know what you mean. Yeah, well, and... Uh, they can have uh, sometimes they're the more the heels are trimmed out, the less you have of that. Okay, I thought maybe because she's a thoroughbred and she's different to my quarter horse, their feet are different. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no, their feet aren't any different, they're all anatomically the same. The only difference is in size, and uh, the only reason they seem different is because the way uh, the different traditions behind the way they're trimmed. Like, um, I posted a uh uh deal by linda vanden 
Elzen, who has a business she and a page called Sound Hoof Trimming, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it showed what happens to thoroughbred feet, especially when they're on the track, because uh, low heels, long toes, they believed in for a long time. Yeah, thinking that it gave them a greater stride, but it just slows their break over and makes them slower and breaks them down. Wow. You know, so but see, I know that genetically these horses do not have different feet. All right. Because um, I used to make this stuff called Miracle Freeze Mud, um, which was a poultice that uh, my mom sells to the race race tracks and stuff like that. And uh, so she had me deliver a whole bunch of it uh, down here to Oklahoma to this lady that raises racehorses. And I don't know who her farrier was, but I've never seen such feet on thoroughbreds in my life. I mean, oh. they were they were fantastic. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> you know, fantastic till they went to the track, I'm sure. Oh. But, but whoever she had trimming all those horses left heel. Uh, they had uh, short, steep toes, good heel, massive feet. Mm. You know, you can you can just ruin them so much by the way you trim them. So, okay. And now we're on the right foot, right medial, and right yeah. lateral. One thing about it, the feet match. Yeah. <laughs> you got the same distortions on both sides. <laughs> Is that right? Eh? Gee, yeah. well, uh, you had the same trimmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you said that she was trimmed twice before you got her. Yeah, they said that. Yeah, because we, we got her at about four, four, four and a half months. And okay. uh, they trimmed her like just after she was born, I guess. And then just before she came to us at like four, four and a half months. Okay. And, and did these people raise thoroughbreds or what was the deal? They, uh, they do, they were breeding a thoroughbred racehorse and she, because she's a filly, you know, they, they sold her because uh, they didn't figure she was going to be a colt for the track. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I don't think they're not really breeders, but they do, they have a barn, you know, a stable and lots okay. of people there. And they've had a, a few good ones out of her, but uh, okay, well, I, I wouldn't consider them a real breeder for thoroughbreds, but okay. But they, they breed her to warm blood and they cross breed her to everything, you know? Oh, okay. But and this so probably has really good breeding from a really good, successful thoroughbred sire. Real, what's the name of her sire? <sighs> oh gosh, now I have to tell you. Uh, What's his name? Seattle's yep. Ser Seattle Serenade. Okay, so yeah, coming was, down from Seattle Slough there somewhere. Yeah, actually, uh, this little filly's grandfather is Seattle Slough, and mm -hmm. Secretariat is in there too, on the same side, on the mother's side, I think, or the father's side. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, she has some really good breeding, and she has Mr. Yeah. Crack here, and yeah, she's got some really great breeding, actually. Wow. Well, that's she great. Cold, she would have been on the track, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. they run Phillies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Sure. Yeah. My One. son, that, this is actually my son's little baby. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. And he's, he was, he said, no, no, I just always love thoroughbreds. I only wanted a thoroughbred just to raise, you know, but now that he sees her breeding and her build and he said, wow, well, maybe we should have her evaluated. So, he's yeah, about it, you know, well, but, I'll tell you what, if, with that breeding, and then if you could put like real feet on her, yeah, you know who knows? Maybe you have another ruffian. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's hey, what hey. I said. I, we don't want them to cut her heels off because every off the track thoroughbred I've seen, they have no heels. Their feet are ruined. And I yeah, said, you want to get her feet really nice, and wherever you take her, if you take her anywhere, don't let them touch her heels. Yeah. So hope, I'm going to send him to uh, that site that you said that that lady about that gave the uh, article about the thoroughbreds because that'll be interesting. Good for him to know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, he that apparently heard the same thing that they they take the heels down for a better reach so they can mm -hmm. have an extended reach when they run. It yeah, how sense. stupid, you know, yeah. and stuff. Well, I I my mom 
my mom's raised racehorses and she lives on the uh, well she lived right behind the track there in phoenix and she sold horse products and and she had uh, uh she bred mares she had mares and colts and she had uh partnerships with this that and the other thing and then she saved a lot of racehorses actually sent them to canada oh, yeah. to, to be uh chair to be uh wagon chuck wagon horses oh really wayne knight do you know who he is oh no i don't so he must have been in the calgary stampede yes okay yeah and so she saved a lot of also have saved a lot of horses off the track so they were um, outriders yeah oh yeah That's and fast. uh and uh and and plus he runs thoroughbreds on his wagons wayne knight does oh yeah and stuff oh. and so she sent quite a few thoroughbreds up there to him um and stuff like that but anyway so i kind of got to be around the track and different things and i wasn't always really impressed with the horsemanship you know i just yeah. wasn't and and what they did to their feet and stuff like that and you can't tell them nothing so anyway i guess that's the way it is all the way around but yeah. um but how you know let's see uh so many breakdowns First of all, because the horses are so young when they race them. And second of all, because what they're doing to their feet. You know, um, anyway. OK, so let's keep going here. Yeah. Now, I have only evaluated the left foot. Okay. I haven't done uh, the the right foot that okay. we're looking at here. Um, the left one seemed to be worse, actually, in the beginning yeah um, had more yeah more wear on the inside now how old's your son he's uh 43 oh okay and is he gonna learn to trim uh i've been help. he's really really busy he travels all the time with his oh, work. okay so, uh, yeah so i've been saving these and i i'm trying to teach him what i know and, and okay. i encourage him to watch uh you know look at your site and he's gonna have to join and yeah learn i want him to learn for sure okay for sure yeah because that's uh you you have to out of self-defense yeah for sure you know unless you can find a a trimmer that does this well kind of a trim we tried two, we tried two here in this area and mm -hmm. um no no they do see now not, linda, not adequate. <laughs> yeah linda maria is from canada oh yeah I yeah, she's where... Canadian, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure like where where you're at and where she's at, because I can't remember. She moved a couple of times, so I can't I remember where she's at. Requesting uh, to see if uh, there was anybody in the area or even in the province that uh, do do your type of trimming, the tack trimming, and nobody responded. So yeah, and so I'm not. I, I'm not sure. You should ask her where she lives. Okay. You know, maybe you're in the close vicinity there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, yeah, see, this is a frog stay. Okay. Behind here. Behind here. Let's see, let's go back to that. What is I'm just going to watch this a little bit here. You can actually grab it and just slow it right down and stop it too, if you'd like anywhere. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just trying to figure out right foot. So this is the lateral. Yeah. And this is the medial yeah. over here. OK. And when I looked at the side view, um, let's go back here. Come on. Okay, so that's the lateral and and yeah you can see that from what i see here this 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 bulb and this heels kind of being pulled forward and this is bulging out okay. here
Yeah. See, the bars actually end right about here. And then yeah. the sole, I, I'm going to have to try and find some pictures because that I've seen, I've gotten that on my horse before. This sole that grows up right here can look exactly like bar. It looked like one big continuation right around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. But but in fact, your bars end right about here. Okay. Yeah, that that confuses people. Now bars can grow forward like that, you know. But uh, Riza, you've seen that before, haven't you? Where where yeah, the soul yeah, will grow yeah. just like that, and yeah, it'll look it's, like it's bar. Different. Yeah, it'll yeah, look just like the, bar wall. Sometimes the bar will go, uh, or whatever you call it, the, the soul in that area will actually go over your, your actual soul and, and cover the whole bottom of that foot if you leave it too long. Yeah, it'll yeah, be, and that. Already before. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're back to the front here. Okay, so I want to, I'm going to go to the markup I did on these feet and explain what I saw. Okay. Okay. Okay, the first thing is that um, a lot of times what happens is when one heel, now there's two things that can happen on a, on a there's something else that can happen on a colt that is similar to a heel being trimmed out. And that is where a heel does not expand like it should when the colt is growing. Um, when the heels are incorrectly trimmed, uh, they will, for at first, when they lower those heels, it, the, you know, the, the heels will be lowered and it will seem like they're way back here and you've done the right thing. But what happens when you keep doing that, eventually uh, you trim out the whole heel buttress and then the, the bar here and the sidewall, see, see, like right here is sidewall. You're looking at pictures. I can't see anything oh, except crud. the front view of the horse. Thank you for telling me that. Just <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How's that? Nope. Oh, there we go. There, I can see them now. Yeah. Okay. I that happens because on Zoom you used to be able to just go flip from one screen to oh, the okay. next. But now you have to do a new share every time okay. you, you do a different screen. Okay, oh, yeah. so yeah. so on, on colts, uh, the difference is on a regular horse, when you trim the heels out, at first, you, it seems like you're doing the right thing because you're, you're taking the heels back. Let me get a pencil here and a color. Let's just use green for me to mark with. A second. Okay. Okay. Like you would take them back to the base of the frog, like back here, lowering the heels like that. A lot of people do. Um, and so at first, that seems like the right thing. And it seems like the foot, you know, is longer. You brought the heels back, but that also brings the heels down. And eventually, if you keep doing that, it uh, trims the heels out. And so what happens is then every time you trim the heels back to the base of the frog like that, um, they're actually moving forward like so. And as they're moving forward, they're also getting wider here. And so people think that's a good thing. They're thinking, oh, look how wide my heels are. Well, they have to get wide because they have to follow the shape of the foot like this. And as the heels are moving forward, which it turns from being bar, heel buttress, and sidewall, once you trim the actual buttress out, okay, then uh, what you have is the sidewall right here, okay, and the bar merged together. And it looks like a heel buttress, but it's not. And so um, that's what happens. And at the same time, all of the anatomy, the bulbs, all this right here is being pulled down and forward along with uh, the heel that, that you're over trimming. And so, so the, 
the bulbs and the cartilages here, okay? Because it's all soft tissue and cartilage and this cartilage is not really connected solidly. It's connected, but it, it moves. I'll have to show a picture. Okay, that's being pulled down and compressed into the foot. So that's like on a big horse, that's what happens. But on a foal, what can happen is it's similar in that uh, when the foal grows, the back of the foot has to be able to expand. They have to be able to wear their hooves enough that as the foot is growing on the inside, the growth from that foot is keeping up and expanding and making the hoof capsule bigger. And so you can either have a deal where somebody came along maybe in the first two trims and over trimmed one of the heels. It's usually the lateral heel because of our body mechanics. When you're holding the foot uh, between your knees or wherever and you're pulling that rasp toward you, um, it's much easier to rasp that la lateral side on either foot than it is the medial side. And so we tend to over trim this side of the foot and um, the lateral side of the foot. And then uh, what happens is because that heel starts being a little more forward in our eyeballs, we're still looking at the the tip of the heel as if it's level or even with the other side when in reality it's forward now uh, and so we start turning the foot to kind of look that way too plus when you pick up a horse's foot it it naturally kind of cocks to one side so if you look at your pictures here um okay like right here it looks you look up here you're looking up here it looks like you got your foot straight. You see there? Yeah. But look down here. Mm -hmm. See the difference in the bulb? Yeah. Okay. So what I did was um, I put it in and I rotated it. Okay. So that it would be straight so that you could see what is really going on with the foot. So see again here, I marked this like this. When you look here, See, it looks like your heels are this, uh, the same at, at the same uh, distance. Yeah. Here, right? Okay, like everything's square. But when you straighten up the foot and then you, you take and you touch this heel to that heel, you can see that this heel is more forward. Yeah. See there? Yeah. Not only that. But, okay, we, we know that that's what's causing the flare here because it's really a bulge. Because if I push something here, uh, it's going to push everything in front of it. So it's going to push this out like that. Another way you can see it is um, look at the bulb here. See, that is correct. The way that looks there. As the heels pushed forward, well, it's going to all this is connected together, right? So as the heel is pushed forward or trimmed out, you know, I'm not sure which it is. I don't know if it's trimmed out or if it just isn't, hasn't developed and and uh, or been able to move back. I think it kind of got trimmed out by the first trimmer. I okay. think that's really what kind of what happened, got over shortened. And so that created an imbalance. Okay. And, um, and what happens is then this side looks higher and longer when in reality, it's really not. And so, and so then, you know, it's a vicious circle because then people keep taking off on this side. Right. See? Um, okay. So, so anyway, all right. So you see the difference. Okay. You see how the bulb looks here? Yeah. Just a second here. Let me do this. I'm just going to go ahead with the green. Okay, that looks good right there. This, because the heel's been either trimmed out or pushed forward or whatever's going on there, and you got this bulge in the side, it's pulled the bulb and the frog with it. You see that? See how much wider it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so all these are signs. And then um, 
of one heel being forward, usually it is because it is, it is more trimmed out. Um, it And again, it also could have been partially a deal where um, certain things in that foot didn't wear quite right. And, and so it, that heel got stuck there and didn't expand. But I, I think it's more of a thing. The first two trims kind of did that. You know, um, okay, um, now let's look at, uh, just a minute here, let's look at, let's see how I want to do this. Okay. Linda, even the barn that starts looking like it's, I'm starting to bend outward. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. That's a good observation. Yeah. See that? See how nice and straight this is in here? Yeah. Yeah, and see how that all bends out there yeah and stuff um so um so another thing is the toe okay let's look at the toe here again when the foot is sideways like this see you you, you almost think it looks pretty good you know you don't see some of this stuff but their feet are supposed to be the same on each side to, I mean, there's going to be a slight variation. I'm not saying exact, exact, but for the most part, um, the way everything is on this side, it should be on this side. I mean, because they're born with feet that are that way, yeah. you know. So, so this is what I want you to see here, um, which this is um, a lot of this stuff is stuff you've already seen. So like the flare yeah. right here. What we know, though, is that it's a bulge. OK, um, from the heel being pushed forward. And so that side is wider. See, I that's why I put these blue lines in here. Yeah. Okay, see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's quite extent. That's quite a bit. Yeah. And the thing is, usually, or at least what I found is that um, when this side is is being pushed out like that it's also drawing this side in you know and compressing this side in a little more than it should be too because everything's connected on these feet so so it's going to affect everything to one degree or another um okay so um another thing is this area here okay look at the toe here how it's more it's it's the shape is different and the size of this area compared to this other side let's see let me use different color oops darn just a minute <laughs> See the different shape? Yeah. And stuff. Okay. So then uh, kind of, okay. Another thing. Okay. So you were talking about how um, you were taken off on the lateral side from about mid quarter around the toe, right? Yeah. Just to the, to the very tip, the front of the toe. Yeah. On right the lateral here. Side, and like I right went about right here. Around. Yep. And I went right around to just, just behind the, the quarter. Okay. Okay, um, and see, uh, the reason uh, people do that is because with the foot picked up, this side looks high, okay? But when you set it down, in reality, what you find is that side's actually, actually lower. I mean, look at the hairline here. Yeah, see how the what, hairline's lower? Yeah, that's what I thought was confusing because uh, she was tipped in on the medial like medial mm -hmm. side which seemed worn off and shorter so that the hairline at the top looked like she was tipped in yeah I it, look at that, yeah it, it's that there's all these, these yeah there's all these optical illusion things yeah. that go on um but there is a leveling system built into the foot of the horse and that is the hoof wall grid and that is the uh the vertical horn tubules and the horizontal growth rings. 
see? Like so. Okay, now if you look over here, okay, I've marked yeah. some of these and you see how these are pushed up over here or wider yeah. than over here. Oh yeah. Okay, so that that's from um, you trimming that way. Okay. okay, because ultimately when the foot gets right, you're gonna have all of these just like that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, uh, and another way you can tell is um, if you view down the foot over the on this side on the toe this side is actually high here another way you can tell that is you see these compression rings here like you have growth rings like what you see right here you can see growth rings but they're not bulged by the time you get over here you're seeing bulges in the growth yeah. rings because that is a self that's like a built-in self-leveling system in the hoof that the hoof wall will compress and bulge to try and compensate for the fact that uh, it's long somewhere or high. See how I mark these? Now see the bulges? Yeah. And stuff, um, but no bulges on this side. See mm -hmm. where you've been trimming it, which is good. Okay, that there's no bulges. Okay, but what's happened is this side then has been left high. And so the hoof wall has compressed to try and make up for that. And so that's why you have, because otherwise it would be the exact same. They should be the exact same distance and um, symmetrical. See, here. And uh, then I mark this here too. You can see the difference in the bulb, how the bulb is shaped, the height over here of the hairlines. Yeah, that's really visible. Wow. And stuff. And again, that's because this heel got trimmed out more. So it's more forward. So what you really have is um, you have uh, uh, more of a, a sidewall and bar together than the actual heel buttress. So you have a kind of a fake heel buttress over there a little bit. Um, let me undo some of this stuff. Okay. Um, and, oh, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. There we go. Okay. And here, okay. Now here on the, on the medial side, look how uh, straight the hairline is going from front to back. Mm -hmm. Okay, but right here on this one, the, it curves down right here. That that also is always a sign that that heel somehow, somewhere has been more trimmed out. Well, then what happens is you start uh, trimming to the distortion of that heel. See, instead of trying uh, to change its boundaries and correct it and stuff so um so what i would do is um first of all i would map these little feet you know and like d just take and draw this type of deal here so that you can kind of look here and and take just a little bit more off of this side here um maybe a little uh take it down just a hair and then a little bit of a bevel so that this side can start dropping down and it can compensate for how this side's been over trimmed and that will balance her feet out. All right. More. Will that help the lateral heel come back a little bit? Yeah. Or yes. It will? Okay. Yeah, it will. And then um, as far as uh, you want to uh, just kind of clean this up some and straighten, you want to map this and trim this bar in here a little okay. bit more. I mean, cause it's little feet. So you gotta do little yeah. changes, you know, and stuff. And- uh, See with um, the toe, because like with the mapping of a, a big hook, 
like you find the apex of the frog, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't, you don't do like, how do you do that? I don't know the measurements or what. Okay. We do. Well, we you don't, you don't order? have, have to do it by measurements. You do it by, by anatomy. Okay. And so what you do is you come in here and you would take off the tip of that frog. Okay. Okay. And, and, uh, what, well, you just take off the tip till you, till you find the where it merges to the soul. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me let me show you some pictures on a big horse. What would determine how far, like where, how far I would take the toe back on that? Then, like, because um, normally it would be like an inch and a half, but her little feet. I mean. Yeah. Work, um, right? Yeah, I don't think you have to take her toe back. No. Uh, because she hasn't got any excess. Okay excess toe there you know what you want to kind of do is is kind of make for now maintain where you're at but straighten yeah. up this side of the foot All right you know clean up this bar here yeah. find your apex of the frog where it merges um see it is a little different because we don't have measurements for fools yeah. because you can't really have measurements for fools because they're growing yeah. You know, and so what will happen is the more you learn about the anatomy, um, it, it, like we could we could enlarge this to make this a big horse's foot. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. you wouldn't even know hardly. Um, I don't know if that's the way I wanted to explain that. Um, once you get so you know these parts of the anatomy, it doesn't matter what size the horse is. There's uh, just a way that everything is. See, I need to work on that. I need to work on how to explain that more. Because like, um, you, you, you know, you, you get to know like how to find the true, true apex of the frog by trimming this frog out right here like let me show you a picture here um da -dum -da -dum -dum. of my last trim oh that's not it just a second here I, I always thought the, the purpose of finding the apex of the frog was to determine so that you could measure accurately where the toe should yeah, be. Yeah, on a big horse. Yeah. You know, so but, but on these little horses, you just have to learn to read these different signs, like learn to read the dorsal wall, learn to read the live soul plane, because this this colt doesn't have any distortions in its toe. So we don't have measurements. I don't have measurements for fools. Okay. I don't even know how you could do that because they're growing constantly. So, you know, yeah. uh, and and the different breeds at the different times. And, you know, um, you just have to learn the anatomy. How would I explain it? <sighs> Well, there's a way, once you do this enough, you can look at the foot and just tell by no, because you know the anatomy. Like when it comes to uh, the last trim I did on my, just a minute and I'll take you there, on my horse. And he, it was time to uh, take his frog back. So I'm just going to, get this picture here just a minute here okay let me share okay and little feet are the same they're just littler and but we don't have measurements for them so you're gonna have to go by 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 the anatomy itself and so we know that their frogs grow and and that the frog lays over you know, get smashed and forward. And so we know that we have to trim that back to keep it from growing over the sole and, and, you know, smashing the sole out there. So this is his frog. Just a minute. Before, and this is his frog after. Okay, now, okay, you see how 
It just blends in. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. It just blends in. Yeah. You know, so you would take off the tip of that frog with the knife and then you would just, you know, clean out around there gently and find where it blends in. Okay. Um, and then you want to clean up the little frogs, you know, um, keep them cleaned up. Uh, like, okay, let me go back. New share. Okay, like, okay, so here, her frogs ain't that bad, but you do want to, you do want to keep them kind of cleaned up, especially when it dries up and stuff, because you want her foot to keep expanding um, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's very important to keep the frogs trimmed up. Um, on a little foot like that, like you wouldn't really touch the periopal skin in the back at all, eh? Um. No, I don't, I don't think so no. at this time, you know. I just um, put off the loose tags that's around and kind of leave it at that. Yeah. Um, you can really clean up their frogs, though. Okay. Um, that isn't going to hurt. And uh, then just pay attention. I mean, if, if it gets real dry and she's growing and uh, because, you know, they'll wear some of this periopal out, too. And stuff. So you do kind of have to keep an eye on it. You know, right now I'm seeing a foot that's you guys got snow up there and there's moisture yeah. and all that, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is a great growth time for her, but it would be important to keep the frog trimmed up um, so that it keeps expanding as her foot is growing. Okay. Okay. And cleaning up the bars here um taking this side down a little more would i make that level with a sole on that side or just yeah. need a little bit of a uh, wall um you could come down to the sole on this side and eventually once she starts really developing sole you could even uh take a pencil width of sole Okay. Um, you know, they're just like any other horse, they, you know, they could build up a little bit of soul over here. And so you have to learn to manage the soul and where the live soul plane is. And what you're looking for is gradually you're going to build symmetry into the foot to where, you know, who is that? Oh, hold on a second. I got an important call. Okay.
Okay. Did was did I have this on mute or do you hear my conversation? Didn't no. didn't hear you. No. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't no big deal. Just somebody asked me about something for deer hunting. Okay. So um let's see. Okay, so you have to learn to read the live soul plane and you have to learn uh to look for symmetry even though even though we don't have measurements okay um you can still map by proportions okay you know the proportions are still the same um you know even with hills like when you look at at the the because because the hills aren't totally trimmed out of this horse and the periopal is not stretched and all that when you look at the bulb skin here okay and you see the width of it mm -hmm. right there well then uh uh about that same width is what you need for a heel see there about like so like you could um you can let her little heels uh, grow, you know, um, but not too long to where they're going to buckle under, you know. And at the, oh, God, this is, you know, on a full, you're going to have to kind of just what, well, let me tell you what Cibola does is, is she just trims them as, as they need it. And all her horses have really good feet. So about once a week, you know, just taking whatever's needed here and there and stuff. You know, you don't want to keep them on a like a, a rigid five week schedule or something like that. But since you have the full there, yeah. you know, see, I could take my horse's foot and map it. And, and you can tell by how it's mapped. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this because without measurements, it is kind of hard to explain it to people, you know, um, but once you start doing it, once you start just doing this kind of mapping like this here, let's do this. I'm trying to think of how I could explain it. Okay. So you're going to want to come in there and you're going to draw a line straight down the center of the foot there. OK, then you're going to want to find the widest part of the foot, which would be right here. And that's okay. usually where the bars end. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Let's see, how do you do that? Let's see. Goes like this. So I got that just about right. See what I mean? Because you, yeah. you come over like so. OK. Um, and then you find your true apex of the frog here, okay? Which is gonna be probably about there. Okay. And um, then on your heels, okay? Uh, your bulb skin here is about like so. Well, looky here. That's your coronary band groove for that little guy right there. And so you're going to want about at least that much heel. See, but his heels are growing in too. So they're kind of forward here. Yeah. But there is a, there's a proportional thing that goes on here, no matter what the size of the feet are. Okay. Um, that you can you can begin to start to read once you once you start mapping like this so could it, would it be fair to say a general rule of thumb would be the width of the coronary band is double it again for the heel the height um i'm not going to i'm not going to stand uh firmly on that because i'm not sure cuz yeah. what i'm looking at is i'm looking where the periopal is kind of ending here yeah you know, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I meant. Right but, about there. And so yeah. um, that you can start there. OK. You know, um, without the foot in my hand to examine it, mm -hmm. you know, and because I have not examined that many Colts feet. OK. okay? Um, 
let me go look at my horse here and look at the proportions. They do kind of understand what I mean by proportions, even though the, the feet are smaller, there's still a certain anatomical proportional thing that's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and if I could figure out how to explain that more, um, but the mapping can be used on that too, if a person kind of understands proportions, um, just like uh, one proportion, it has to do with uh, the length of the dorsal wall and what the heels should be. Just a minute. Let me let me check that. Okay, so here's your length of your dorsal wall. Now you would know if that was correct because um, you would be able to know where the live sole plane is here. So let's say this is the size of your dorsal wall. Okay, let's go down here. Now this has a nice straight, she has a nice straight coronary band on this side. Let's find the end of the heel. Okay, now her heels are growing in too. The back of the foot is expanding. So I'm not gonna expect it to look um, like an anatomically correct foot would look. And I know this foot, this heel ain't correct over here because of the way that's curved down. Yeah. Okay. Um, so proportion wise, you've got this number going on. Okay. See that? Yeah. Um, I've got some other pictures too. Just a minute here. Um, Let's see if I got them here. Let's look at some of these. Just a second here. Um, new share. Okay, this is just a uh, uh, artificial hoof, whatever you want to call it and stuff. Now, now here's that frog stay. Here's your frog. And that's the frog stay that grows up between the bulbs. Um, just a minute here, annotate. Okay, so proportions. This foot um, has pretty good proportions. There's the heel. Okay, so your heel the part that just goes, you know, to the end of the foot itself is about like so. It's about two to one, uh, um, Linda. Okay. And uh, so we know that you you want to have some sole under there, right? So about like about like so does that make sense kind of yeah anyway it's hard to explain but once you get to working on the foot and starting to learn her little soul plane and things like that and, and looking for symmetry and the sides of the toe um you could measure her bulb skin from here to here, you know, and see uh, what that is. I'd be interested to know. And then see, see, I don't think I did this drawing right. Something ain't working out for me. Probably because I, I was doing it on the foot and then I, ref I went over to a hoof capsule and it ain't working just a minute. Okay, where is... Just a minute. Okay, undo. You're gonna have to excuse me because I'm finding that no uh, uh, I'm I have not been feeling good for a long time, oh, gee. and I'm not feeling good at all today. But I didn't realize it till I actually sat down. 
I'm oh. having I'm having some real problems with inflammation and it's really affecting my head. Oh yeah. Well, if you're yeah. not, if you don't feel like you'd like to continue, we can, no, can no, we, we can, con food. we can continue, but I'm just going to tell you that, um, everything ain't working right. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. All right. My brain is like on fire for some oh, reason. Geez. Um, yeah. The, Okay, well, let me look at find some more pictures here. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's look at this. How would this be? So you got okay. Well, see, you you have to be able wherever her little periopal flap is, right there. Mm -hmm. That's about where the internal heel ends. Oh, okay. Okay, so you want to have heel beyond that because you don't want our heels to end right here. What no. are we still? Um, let me see. Let's make sure I'm at the right right one. Okay, good. Yeah, so you know you the that periopal skin covers this area here, and just a little bit below that. Okay. So it's like on a big horse, it's usually always at about one and one eighth inch. And that tells you about where your internal heel is ending. Um, so of course you would want the wall to grow down about twice that far so they have sole. But that's not to say that in a foal, it's gonna be like that since they're in the process of growing, Yeah, you see. Again, here's the the frog, and that's the frog state. This is between the bulbs right here. That big piece of frog that we were talking about earlier is between her bulbs right there. See there? Yeah. Just like that. Um, so even though they're smaller, there are still certain proportions to all their feet that are the same. Um, let me do this. Okay, that other deal did really work out for me. Let's try it on here. Okay, so here is where her, huh, I haven't done that. I'm just going to go to here. This is the proportional thing I work on, which is the hairline here. that okay now i remember why i was screwed up okay so the length of the heels is about two thirds one half to two thirds of the length of the dorsal wall you see that yeah okay and then you always have this triangular piece here and that's where we were talking to about reading the growth rings because look here Okay, the hoof wall grows down from here. And so you got your coronary band groove behind here, and you've always got this kind of ring of periopal. Yeah. And then that just grows down like so. And so on each side of the foot, it should be the same. Mm -hmm. So we looked at your one foot and they were uh, different on the one side. One side was narrower and one side was higher. Let me go over there. Yeah. Um, let's see, undo. New shit. Okay, see here? Okay, see, it should be the same on both sides. But you can't, that doesn't mean you can just come in and, and carve it to that. You know what I mean? Because, and this is what I shared in that video I did about, um, about the toe and, and how to trim the toe and what happens with the pillars when the wall gets jammed up and stuff like that. But because, because you could still have um, a relatively same amount of sole down here even though the wall is doing this number so you can't just come in and like trim that off clear up to there 
to make it look exactly like that because you've got these bulges in the wall. Okay, so you've got to come in and you've got to bevel her little wall, you know, just to give it a little room. You can take it down a little bit. But um, the reason, of course, it's like this too is because you've been taking this side off. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, um, I think just if... And if you take pictures and do you know how to use paint? Yeah. Okay. Well, to some degree. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, just what I'm doing here. Yeah, I can do that. You know, um, and see, and doing that, that'll teach you a lot too about what you're trimming, where you're trim, maybe taking too much, where you're not taking enough. See, by reading these different things that I've been talking about here. Yeah. Um, I never noticed the difference in the, uh, the, uh, difference between the lines like that there in the front when I looked at her I didn't see that yeah but yeah it makes yeah you can see it there for sure yeah and I've got some um I probably have some video more videos on that too it's just because the vet said that yeah mm -hmm. you want to do that when they're young you want to take that lateral heel down so that you can you know so she doesn't tip in because she was the way she was standing we are feeding her when she's in her box up yeah all of her feet is up but it's when she's out to pasture and she's let out every morning at about nine and she doesn't come yeah. in until six, seven o'clock at night, you know? Yeah. And I can understand why the vet uh, said that because that's the way it looks. Yeah, it did. She did. And she you did know? look like she, like earlier pictures that I took uh, when I looked at her from the front, her, she did look like she was walking on the inside of her arches. You know, if you were, if you were a human, you're, you're walking yeah. on your arches, you know? Yeah. So she did look tip like that. So I thought, wow. So I looked online to see what can you do for that? Because I thought I'm not touching her heels. I don't care yeah. what the vet says. I'm not touching her heels. Especially yeah, thank that. God. Yeah. And, and what I saw was when they say babies like little foals are born and they're, some are pigeon toed, some are knock kneed, but yeah. it changes the way their hooves they stand. And what I saw from her was they said that uh, she had, uh, uh, she towed, she towed out, I think, so that towed out stood, yeah so she hurt she stood more on the inside but that's basically because of her long legs and her shorter neck the way that she's feeding she stands with her feet spread and so she's leaning yeah. more of her weight on the inside so the outside's kind of uh, growing and the inside's getting worn off yeah so I thought well okay if I balance that that was what they suggested go from the middle of the front of the toe right around to the lateral side or whatever side it is but the lateral mm -hmm. side and I only went just behind the, the quarters on that side and leveled it to the wall and beveled it. Mm -hmm. Well, leveled the wall to the sole and beveled it. And I thought, okay, so now when I look at her in the front, she looked like she was standing a little more level, but mm -hmm. then it was confusing because like I saw the hairline was like lower. I yeah. Thought, How can that be? Yeah, I know it is confusing. <laughs> yeah. And from the few good farriers I've been around, and I, I think this is true, in, in some cases, I was always told um, if they tow out, they're high on the inside. And if they tow in, they're high on the outside. Yeah. You oh. Know? oh, okay. Maybe you I see what I'm wrong. saying? Yeah that's, yeah. that's what that's what I was told. Um, yeah, that makes sense. It makes Maybe sense here. Because yeah, that's probably why she said to take the lateral heel down. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that way it would lower, uh, make her toe out more, right? If you remove yeah. the heel. I don't know. I'm getting confused now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know they had a little diagram <laughs> picture and I thought, oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> that <what> you're doing. <laughs> well, it's just a, a, such, it can be such a brainiac sometimes, you know? Yeah. Uh, because you're dealing with two things. You're dealing with a capsule and a foot. You're dealing with two different things even though yeah. they're connected together you know and we can't see what's going on with that internal foot and the, everything on the capsule has a counterfeit counterfeit heel you know yeah. um everything yeah um even the apex of the frog you know like oh well there's the apex of the frog no it's probably back here more yeah you know um things like that so anyway um, so, uh, but the big thing to be aware of too, 
is um, to keep this back part of the foot, you know, cleaned up and the frog cleaned up so that the foot can expand. Yeah. So I think she has good space beside her collateral groove so that oh, she, yeah. the frog so far is like not too bad. No, but, she's uh, got a good, good frog. But the important yeah. thing is, is to keep it trimmed up so yeah. that as her foot grows, her foot can expand. Yeah. Because um, if, uh, if you don't keep the frogs trimmed up and if they get petrified and dead, that holds the foot in a vice. Okay. See, that everything has to be able to renew on the bottom yeah. of these feet. You know, and there will be times you probably have to like kind of take off some of that periopal and stuff like that so that her foot can expand. Yeah. Because that's all stuff that, that can hold the foot and keep the, the uh, bulbs and collateral cartilages from expanding so that, well, that wasn't very good, so that, you know, her foot can expand. I mean, her foot will really expand and be back like that as it grows. Yeah. You know, this, <clears throat> this is the thing right here that gets bound up right in here so anyway that's about all i have and all right so, well that's good so i'll just okay. i'll work on just lightly uh taking down that medial side a little bit yeah and uh cleaning up the frog a little bit and take bars well not that bar stuff but that sole that's growing that looks like bar i'll just level that off to the sole right there yeah, yeah. and that should and, be good and okay. oh yeah the bar that's flaring a little bit so i should just <laughs> take that down and straighten it up a little yeah. Right there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh and then Riza, you got anything that you could add to that? Yeah, just a little few things. Um, if you look at your top picture in the left corner, the yeah. one where you mark the blue and the red on it, yeah. Right here. Now the blue line, yeah, yeah, that one. Now the blue line, if you look at that, what's gonna happen is even if you look at the, the other picture next to it, you'll see um where that blue line supposed to be that blue line was, you'll almost see that like the bottom of the uh, foot below the blue line is slightly narrower than the top of the blue line. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So what's happening there is that this foot um, is still held together by a bit of the deciduous hoof. That little bit is still on the bottom of that foot. Oh. And uh, it will grow off in the next two trims and that whole foot's going to expand. Okay. Then you see that. You're talking yeah, about it, this part right here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks it's uh, like the, it's almost like an inch up from the bottom of the foot. Okay. I'm lost. But okay. Take... <laughs> <laughs> Say again. All right. It don't take much for me to get lost these days, but <laughs> getting old and senile. So you're saying there's still like baby toe left on there and that it's going yeah. to actually grow out. Okay. And once that once that little baby does run off, or you um it's worn off or trimmed off uh, by growing off basically, uh, the foot is going to expand. You're going to see it, and it looks it's going to look like the foot suddenly just expanded. Okay. Oh, okay. But you can you see you can already see from the top down to that line, um the hoof is already uh, slightly bigger than that little part below below the blue line. Oh yeah yeah. So okay. that could also be caused for the compression there, but I do see that she does tend to compress that inside of that, the medial sides of her feet more. Yeah. Um, you know, that, 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 that could also be part of the way she is at the moment, because at the moment that chest is very tightly closed. It's not, it's not very open, which is not a bad thing because as they grow, the chest opens up. And if the chest opens up, the foot feet kind of turn slightly in. So if she is a little bit towing out at the moment, I wouldn't worry too much about that because okay. that will straighten up as the chest widens, the feet will start turning in. Okay. So if she toes out a little bit right now, the chest opens up, the toes are going to start straightening up and, 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 and she'll be straighter in that, that, that way. So okay. I don't think there's too much um, you can do to do do with that now, um, I'll okay. just let it go. Get that uh, 
once that uh, the, uh, baby hoof has grown off, basically, you're going to have a better idea of what foot you've got. And I promise you're going to see a much more expanded open hoof. Um, what I can see is your frogs are, are quite decent. Not bad frog at all. I would try and keep them as supple as possible. All right. Because, um, you know, even by trimming off hard bits and even getting, a, okay, you've got a, a wet weather there now, so that's great. So it's going to be staying moist and, 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 yeah. and it's not going to be allowed to dry out and contract the foot. So basically that will help yeah. you in the next, I don't know how long your winter is now, but I mean, oh, winter, be feed- winter till uh, probably April. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh yeah, that's a long winter. That's Canada. <laughs> I'm in Canada. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Ontario, Canada. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and obviously, um, after snow melts and everything, you're still gonna have wet weather and wet wet ground there. Yeah. I suppose. So yeah. that's actually a very good thing because it's gonna keep your frogs and and, and hoof uh, quite supple. So whatever change is gonna happen, it's gonna happen, and and the foot is gonna be allowed to to change much easier than a dry area where the foot basically kind of contracts. Right. So your foot's going to expand in the next, I would say in the next two months, okay. two to three months, you're going to see a much bigger hoof print on the source. Okay. Well, that's comforting to know, at least that, you know, not to worry too much about oh, the yeah. way it is right now. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. There's no, there's no big worries. I mean, what Linda told you to do by lowering just a little bit, that's, a, that's the yeah. best you can do for the source at the moment. Perfect. I'm um, keeping the collateral groups clear of frog material. Yeah. Uh, trimming up your bars would be great. And uh, the thing is, uh, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, um, that, that, that compression that you're getting there, it's because, um, like, we, like I've heard earlier, short neck, long legs. So when yeah. she goes down to basically dries, that's going to happen. Now, what's going to happen is um, in the next couple of months, a neck is also going to grow. <laughs> so she's going yeah, to get hopefully. longer. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, there's going to be less and less pressure on that inside as well. Okay, great. So a lot of changes is going to happen because it's a young horse. But I mean, yeah. at the moment, nothing, nothing looks completely bad or completely out of shape or anything. You know, okay. it's just what, what Linda told you to do, like keep your boundaries, keep your symmetry, try and uh, alleviate pressure where, where, where she's marked them. Yeah, and that 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 in itself will, will facilitate more of the the changes that's going to happen to this food naturally as well. Okay, great. So she I don't. I mean, I don't. She seems to have. I don't know a, a soft sole because it looks like she's got like dents right in beside her bars in the bottom of the sole. I don't know what that's from. It's not like she's had abscesses or anything, but they look. Like Where is that? Dense. Right beside the bars on on both yeah. sides of her hoof, you'll see like there's indentations. You know? Yeah. Right. But just into the sole? Mm-hmm. But right that's not here. a problem. No, that's I... not a big problem. Mm-mm. Right next to the bar you're talking about. Pardon? Is it that right next to the bar? Yeah, right near, right near, right there where Linda's got her little X. Well, she had her X there. Yeah, there's okay. some like yeah, yeah. indentations right in there into the sole, actually. It almost looks like stone yeah, that... indentations, you know? Yeah. No, that's that's not that's that's fine. Don't worry too much about that. Okay. That will all smooth them out. That will all smooth out as the hoof grows and expands. Okay. Yeah, and because your bars, the... your bars are a little high, so the yeah. sole goes like this, and the bar is a little high, so okay. it's that's what's making that too. Like okay. it does it so over here too. Smooth it out. Smooth it out. Don't uh, don't go and cut it deep. Just smooth it out. Yeah. Keep it okay. with your sole. That's about it. Don't don't go right. cutting. And, and also, don't take um because you're in a wet wet season at the moment. I wouldn't be taking a lot of frog off on the top. I'd rather keep the sides clear, right at the back. Okay. All right. Because the, the top of that frog at the moment is going to also help, um, basically, when she loads that foot, to try to expand that foot a little bit more. Okay. It's not like it's going to force it open. It's not like an old horse where the foot is set and, and you're going to try and force it open. It's not that. It's, it's just that this horse is going to gain in, 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 in weight yeah. and everything else. So... Um, you don't want uh, uh, no pressure on that frog at this point in time because if you do take too much of the frog off, the feet might contract, and that's okay. not what you want. All right. So I'd, I'd leave the top of that frog alone. I mean, if there's hard parts, if it's sticking up too much or something that wants to slough off, I'm take it off. It's not a problem just so you don't get any thrush or anything like that. Yeah. 
But anything, any, any other than that, your frogs look great. I don't have a problem with your frogs at all. The one bar you can straighten up, like Linda said, and also that compression on the inside there, on that uh, uh, wolf in the, in, the, in the corner, on the left corner, right in the left corner, the one with the blue lines, mm -hmm. just to, to basically take some of that, that hard wall off. So just to get that to drop down a little bit, you know, yeah. just to get rid of the compression in that area. But like okay. I said, you can see the, 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 the actual line that you've got there. That's part of the compression because obviously the, the little baby hoof is a little softer than your actual yeah. real hoof coming down from the top now. So obviously yeah. it will be able to, be, to compress easier. Okay, yeah, for sure. Because there was like a lot of change all of a sudden, like in a week, there was a major change. No. Thought, wow, that's you fast. Can, you see, look, within the next month, you're going to see a much bigger hoof print on that horse. Okay, much great. Bigger. Hopefully yeah, good. So for I, wouldn't, you. I wouldn't worry too much. All and right. there's little things like like Linda said to touch up and keep an eye on and uh, you know check it week by week and just see if there's something that you need to do do it and just that, that's it don't do too much at one time okay. don't do a big trim at all at any time on, on, on a young horse right all right sounds good but other than that how no I was just gonna say while I was sitting here I was thinking of something else too that if 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 you get one toe, one side of the toe that's a little bit high, you know, that also throws them back onto that yes. heel. Okay. You know? Yeah. And so that could be doing that as well. Yeah, that, okay. that, that definitely has an effect on, on, on weight distribution. So right. um, naturally, your, 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 your toes on the inside, like normally, normal horses, like I would say normal horses, I'd say most horses um, tend to grow a, a, a toe, a medial toe longer uh, on, on, on all their feet. It's just the way they lo load the feet. I mean, right. from young onwards, they, they do that. So um, to keep that medial toe in check is always a good thing because, I mean, if they were to be walking in areas where they can wear their feet off and they can go long distances looking for food and water and stuff like that, they'd naturally wear the toe off. But because they didn't have the natural environment to do that, we've got to try and facilitate that with our trim. Right. Sounds good. I will keep an eye on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the side that Linda marked with a blue line and a yeah. little red arrow. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Great. Yeah, other than that, I wouldn't worry too much because your feet doesn't look like, oh, like yeah. it's completely bad. It's oh, just no, changing at the moment. All right. Being a young horse, it's going to change a lot still. But like I said, in the next two months, you're going to see a much bigger hoof print. That, that's for sure. Okay, great. Yeah, it's going to be, be neat to see uh, her feet develop. For sure. And I'll take some, uh, some more pictures. I'll do a little toe touch up there on the medial side. And then uh, I'll take some more pictures and keep an eye on it. And I'll That'd let you great. see what they're doing. Yeah. That'd be great. What, what, what you can do, what you should do actually is let it stand square um, yeah. on maybe on a, on a surface or even on a piece of uh, little board, cardboard or something or whiteboard or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Let it stand square from, front, from the front onwards. Then you can mark the middle of her um, dorsal wall, the center, okay. if you can take it like from your, through your, 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 your um, central sulcus, right through the apex of your frog onto your wall and then draw the line right up onto your wall. When she right. stands square, you can actually measure and 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 and, and actually basically just uh, take a line, draw the hoof on the actual um, whatever she stands on, and make okay. a line to where it faces. And you can immediately see uh, which way these feet are facing, whether they're turning out, whether they're turning in, just as a, okay. as, as a guide oh, yeah. for now. And then then you can do it again in two months' time and see what has happened. Okay. And then also just have a look at the chest. And see which ways the the knees are facing. Yeah. Okay, that's you know, good. It's just one of those things you can do. Yeah, because I mean, you're gonna have this horse for, for its lifetime. So I mean, yeah. it's a good thing to do to, to to check and see how much that chest expands and how much that feet then starts turning in or coming back in. Okay. You know, huh. like that will be yeah, very that. interesting. Yeah. So yeah, otherwise, other than that, I don't think there's much more you can do at this stage or over, don't just, main thing is don't over trim this. Yeah. Feet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I have a, I kind of have a hard time like 
like uh, saying uh, exactly what to do because it's it's like little bits here and there, you know. And like what he said, you don't want to overdo it. No, you know. But there, but little things add up to big things. It, yeah. Whether it's little things that people do to create distortions or little things that people do to keep the feet going in the right direction. Yeah. And because that, it is that, that, black soft, sure. it, yeah. No, it's not as bad as you thought. <laughs> no. No. I mean, my horse, I didn't go for about two years, from birth to two years. I think I only touched his feet once. Oh, wow. But, but he, was, he, was, he was actually on a, on a, on, on a surface where he could self-trim a little bit. And it trimmed quite nicely. And I mean, I've got no problems with his feet at the moment. I mean, he's five years old, six years old. And uh, oh. his feet's looking great. I mean, the only time I have to trim him is now, I mean, look, it's been been a while, so I, I, I kind of leave him alone a little bit. But I mean, it's not because of, I think it's just me being neglected. That's all, but the feet just stays great. So it's, you know, I don't believe in over trimming them at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a matter of just keeping in touch with the things that's, that, that, that's not wearing. Those are the parts that you should touch up regularly because like I've said, your inside, your medial toe area, toe, quarter to toe, is going to be longer most of the time than the, than the, than the lateral toe. So oh. keep an eye on that part because yeah. it's just the natural way they move, that they kind of wear that. But in her case, of course, she's been grazing with a, with a wide leg, leg stance at the moment with a short neck. She's kind of putting a little bit more pressure on the uh, the yeah. medial side, which yeah. will change as long as the neck grows. And uh, it's basically just to keep that those type of things in, in, in check at the moment. Okay. Until she grows into, into a horse where she doesn't need to do that, you know. Yeah. But then she's also going to do the other thing where she basically lifts the one uh, foot up and put the other one forward and, and graze. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that'll be another issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because normally what then happens is you get a bit of a high-low issue in that way. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, so it's a type of thing that you... Uh, the, 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 what I've, I've found is for things like that, you've got to just recognize which way it's going, like with, whether she puts a front left or front le a right forward and, and, and grazing. The side that she grazes on most of the time with a leg forward, that one will take more pressure so it will... Norm normally be that she would be like considered right-handed or left-handed, that, that type of thing. But in saying that, I would then um, do a little bit more work on her to, 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 to load the other side as well. So basically lunge her more on, on the side that she's not loading. So she's forced to load that side as well. You okay. Know? Yeah. But oh. generally, I mean, it's, it's things that people don't really do with young horses. Sometimes they just leave them to grow up and do their own thing and you know, then they end up having a high low because of uh, basic pressure on the one and not enough on the other, you know. And uh, also, like in your case now, where she grazes with wide leg stance, but that, that's just because um, uh, she make us very short at this point in time and she needs to reach the, the grazing and that's it. Yeah. But I mean, if you feed her at this stage where she, when she's in, at the level where she doesn't have to uh, open up her legs, where she can actually stand comfortably on both legs, loading both feet, properly and have a hay or whatever she's eating at the inside and um, that should also help because it takes off a lot of pressure from one side of the foot to the other yeah definitely yeah, when she's inside uh, she's eating above for sure but it's, it's when she's out during the day it's like yeah yeah look 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 they're not going to graze 24 7 you know they, they'll yeah. play around they'll lay down they'll stand yeah. around and um, but when she does graze you'll open up a leg so um, it's, it's just basically going to be a management thing from yeah. now on, you know, manage the feet, whatever is not um, basically trimming or self-trimming or whatever is growing faster because um, there's less pressure on it needs to basically come off or, you know, in this case, really Linda marked everything. I mean, yeah. she's basically going to spot on what you should do, but don't um, over trim. That's the main thing. Don't, right. You know, a lot of people trying to fix the foot in one trim. It's not no, going to work right. that way. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank you both very much. That was very helpful, very educational. I'm super glad that it's recorded. 
because now yeah. I can have to go back and watch it again. There we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's great. That's and I will definitely get some follow-up pictures too. And uh, I'll do a weekly follow-up, you know, so that we Okay, can that'd be awesome. Yeah. And I'll, I'll do that with the cardboard or something on the ground and I'll mark the foot and we'll, we'll see the changes there too. That'll be great. Yeah, that'll be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Good visual to see yeah, uh, what's going on. You're going to see... You're going to see how much the foot expands, how much bigger the foot is getting on the on that surface because you're going yeah. to draw the whole foot and, and also draw the center line which way it's facing and everything. Yeah. So you're going to see That's... as the chest opens up how the toe starts to basically toe in. No, I wouldn't say toe in, but I mean straighten more in that way. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, did, did you post a picture of the whole horse ever? Uh, I think I put a picture of her when just the day that we picked her up she was like four months old. Oh, but okay. The, yeah, the chest view uh, that I posted was like just yesterday. Okay. Uh, I think it's only from the chest down. But if you want a whole picture, yeah, a whole, yeah, yeah, like a couple of whole yeah. pictures for sure. She's looking a little woolly right now, but that's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, that'd be awesome. Great. Her name's Ruby. Ruby. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Well, thank you very much for all of your time and all of your advice and help. And I know it's, uh, I know it's your passion, but this is your, your day off. And then it's a lot of work to do this. I really appreciate it. Well, you're sure welcome. It must be Reese's day off because, because it's not my day off. <laughs> Every day's the same for me. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of it anyway. Well, I sure will. Hey. Thanks for sharing with us as well. It's oh, going to be great watching this youngster grow up and have yes. good feet. Okay, well, so everybody take care. And um, uh, we'll probably start doing regular, uh, these regularly uh, here, probably start next week. I'll post a, a thing. Is okay. Sundays, Sundays okay for you, Riza? Yeah, it's perfectly fine for me. And that's basically my off day. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, hey, everybody, take care. Have a great day. And uh, we'll be talking at you later. Great. Thank you. Keep you. Well. you keep well. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. That was awesome. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. See how to get out of here. Eh -eh. Oh, my goodness. Sakes. I'm trapped.